a presentation of the state of the county, its affairs, and how things are going. Uh, I begin with a sports reference. We're at the tail end of the NFL season. Unfortunately, my beloved Buffalo Bills are not in the playoffs. In fact, they haven't been since Bill Clinton was president. Uh, but as fans, nonetheless, we watch football, and we're all inundated with commercials that are on. And State Farm Insurance, in addition to double-checking discounts and being a good neighbor, is also home with the tagline, Get to a Better State. Let me start off by saying the county is in a better state now in 2014 because of the work done over the last 12 months. How so? Let's look at the accomplishments this past year. The county had a few best evers in 2013. We had our best sales tax revenue performance in the county's history, taking in $30.2 million in 2013. We had the highest occupancy rate in the eight-year history of the Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation at over 98%. When some counties are considering closing their public nursing homes because of occupancy or fiscal concerns, that's impeccable. We were also recognized as the number one healthiest county in New York State by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation through the University of Wisconsin. We also had a series of firsts in 2013. We were the first county in New York State to receive accreditation by the Public Health Accreditation Board. We also created the county's first formal five-year capital improvement plan. And for the first time in its short history, the State Office of Homeland Security bestowed upon the county a major interoperability grant, a game-changing award of nearly $6 million for emergency communications and first responders. And we did all of this with a budget that was again tax cap compliant. It may not seem like much, but the governor is now talking about rewarding residents of municipalities that remain compliant with the cap, so this practice well, I think that plan is a bit gimmick. <coughs> Could have some additional value in the years ahead. And we also did it with uh, what I would characterize as good uni union management relations. We now have all five of our collective bargaining agreements in place uh, for the first time in some time. And it has, and carries with it, fair compensation and balanced trade offs. I don't want you to get off on the wrong foot that we had a challenge for a year. Those don't exist in county government. We do have the budget every single year under the crush of what are ever-increasing mandates, and that always proves difficult. As I just told a resident that called inquiring about the governor's proposals, before I even begin budgeting for all of our departments, all of our services, accounts, programs, and projects, I need to skim off 40% of our roughly $25 million tax levy to pay a single bill, Medicaid. And nowhere in the United States except New York State does the county government have that type of fiscal responsibility. It just doesn't exist. We also this year as a board and a county government had the very difficult decision of child divestiture, which was met with much controversy and community debate. The Board of Supervisors does not shy away from tough challenges. And at the end of the day, we pride ourselves as a county on ethical decision making and managing with maximum integrity. Challenges do remain in 2014. For example, yesterday the governor did ex announce his executive budget, and we wonder what our impact will be. But I'm confident no matter the challenge, obstacle, or impact faced, that the team in Livingston County and our government, which is second to none, will rise to the occasion. A key to a healthy county government is a stable, non-public workforce, private development, and good quality of life. I would get pleased to report we're making sound, practical decisions in our government operations to keep people employed, grow businesses from within and from outside the county of life, and to shepherd community developments to fruition. These are exciting times, especially for a high-performing local government agency. I want to specifically highlight a few areas, and one is our Economic Development Office, restructured, re-energized, and redirected towards job and assessed value increase in production outcomes. 38 projects were identified in 2013 for either expansion, retention, or attraction. Even better, I feel we're just scratching the surface and the best is yet to come. And this is growth from multiple sectors, 
agriculture, business services, retail, manufacturing, you name it. You may not see a home run here, but our goal is base hits and keeping a sustainable stream of runs coming in for taxpayers, employers, and job seekers. Call it money ball for county economic development. There was also much gain this past year in the planning arena. While perhaps not headline grabbing, three key transportation priorities were tackled in 2013. First, we were awarded $44,000 for the development of the Dansville Transportation and Industrial Commercial Access Site. Second, we completed the countywide transportation connectivity plan with numerous layers of input received from stakeholders. And third, we championed through planning and economic development a $3.7 million grant application, which was eventually successful, of the Geneseo, Genesee and Wyoming Railroad for needed rail improvements from Dansville to Mount Morris. These efforts are laying the groundwork for future quality of life improvements and access, movement of goods and services, and economic and community development for the entire county. I could literally sit here for hours, stand here for hours, and rattle off a multitude of successes accomplished in 2013 from departments and services from Beijing to Zumba, well, wellness, and everywhere and everywhere else in between. Uh, there's an expectation of excellence in all that we do. It starts with the policy guidance and leadership of the people in this room, the Board of Supervisors, through their three committees. They, like us, work for the people. We are in this game because we value public service, and we must never forget that the people of this county own this county government. In closing, I am proud to assert that we did get to a better state in 2013. As we start 2014, we do not rest on our laurels. We do not get tied down by inertia. We press on to make performance improvements and process gains. The state of the county is strong. We are fiscally healthy with a balanced budget. We have a strong organization from the bottom up and from the top down. Our culture is one of innovation and dedication. And I look forward to all that lies ahead this next year.